Michaela. Welcome to my podcast. Thanks for having me. So good to have you here. You're, this is Michaela. She's the captain of the Northern Mystics netball team and a member of the Silver Ferns when she's when she's uninjured. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I always say on a, I'm in the Silver Ferns on a good day. Yeah, so you've um, how many times have you played for the Silver Ferns? Oh, not many. Um, 15-ish. So you first made the Silver Ferns in... 2018. And then you had a gap of... Oh, like five like years? Five years or something, so the media like to tell me. It's incredible, really, eh? It's inc- like you, You've just been that injury prone. Like, and the fact that you made it back, it feels like it's a... You, you, I don't know, it must have felt like your, your Silver Fern dream was almost over. Yeah, it definitely got to that point. I remember when I got injured the first time, I was like, I'll be back. No issues, like, I'll do the work, I'll be back. Then the second time, like, the longer it went that I wasn't in, the more and more I thought, oh, yeah, okay, I don't think I'll be back there. Hmm. Why? Just, um, yeah, just because the younger players come along. Yeah, you're like, not sports, on the selectors sport, radar. Yeah, like, and you get to a certain age, they're probably thinking, we probably need to start building the next layer or tier of player. And we can't really waste time on someone that's been injured twice. Major injuries, been out for ages. The game's kind of moved on. And I. I knew I was good enough to get back, but... Yeah. And also because you're in your mid-twenties, you're old news. Yeah. Old, old, you're old, know, exactly. old has been. But, like, you are because they're thinking about, like, four, four-year four cycles. And, like, I'm thinking, oh, yeah. But then I'm probably making a narrative in my own mind that the selectors aren't thinking. But because you haven't been selected, you try to think of all these reasons. Why not? Mm. Also, another way of looking at it, I suppose, is the... Um, the downtime when you, you're not playing due to injuries and you're doing strength and conditioning and rehab, maybe that'll like tag those years onto the end of your career. Well, yeah, definitely not for me. My There is no way my body's going to give me more <laughs> years than I uh, have currently. So uh, Maybe for others, yes. Why, yeah, what, is, what is wrong with your body? Why are you so accident prone? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I, I've got psoriatic arthritis and my body, I always say my body just hates me. Like my body didn't want me to be an athlete. Um, they don't think that that was, well, depends on who you ask, but they don't think that that was related to my Achilles ruptures that I had. But, like, days are tough. Like, getting out of bed in the morning is tough. Like, the maintenance I have to do on my body is tough. And the mental and emotional toll that that takes just to get to the start line of netball training or a netball game, I don't know how many years I can keep doing that for. So, yeah. <laughs> so, where did this all start? Oh, well, I've been injury prone my whole life. That's nothing new. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I heard a podcast that you did, and uh, this was years and years. This is the only podcast I found that you've been on, and it was from like 2017 or something. And you talk about the injuries that you had through like secondary school. So you, you just got like a, is it a genetic thing? Just like a weak body? Yeah, I don't know. I only got diagnosed with the psoriatic arthritis after my Achilles ruptures in 2020. 2021, actually, I got diagnosed with that. Um, but yeah, growing up, back, shins, like always injured with something. Um, they don't really know why or how, but yeah, lots of injuries. <laughs> Did you think about a desk job? <laughs> no, not at all. Well, it's just funny because I'm so competitive. So if I do get injured, my first thought is, how do I get back? Mm. Not, how do I give up? Like, I just want to keep going and I want to be playing. Wow, just that growth mindset, eh? Yeah, and I just love netball. Like, I'm actually a fan of the game. I watch every ANZ game. I watch every Silver Fern game. Like, I just I really enjoy the game. And that's probably the disappointing thing is I just love it. And you're good at it. You're really good <laughs> at it. I, but uh, it wasn't always like this, eh? So you're, um, you're from a family with um, – you're the baby of the family. There's two older brothers. Yes, um, good so research. You're the, <laughs> <laughs> so you're the baby of the family. Um, you, what, what does that mean, growing up with two older brothers? So were you – Com, you know, competitive with them. You never played netball growing up, eh? Hey? Yeah, no, I didn't. Very competitive with my brothers. One, Sam, he's eight years older than me. So when we were younger, not as competitive because that age gap's so big Massive. that, you know, like he could have hurt me seriously if we started to go toe to toe in sport. Whereas my other brother, James, is only two years older than me, but we would go toe to toe. Like we would, yeah, fight. We were the <laughs> most competitive, me and him, just because we were so close in age. Um, but yeah, they definitely taught me to be tough. Mm. There's, there's probably some studies or research that has been done on this, but um, 
from I've found like from people I've had on the podcast, like high performers, a lot of them have like older siblings, mm. and I think it's just like playing at that upper level when you're younger. It just makes you tougher or better. Yeah, and like my brother would always like coerce me into like playing rugby or soccer with him on the back lawn. He'd be like, "Right, if you play this with me." I'll then come inside and play Barbies with you. And we <laughs> never, ever came inside and played my game. And you'd think that I would learn, like, okay, it's probably time that I go first, but I'd always end up outside playing with him and oh, having fun. Oh, my fun. God. I, I think I did the same sort of trade-off with um <laughs> with my siblings. Like, yeah, come and play a bit of tennis with me or cricket on the driveway, and then I'll play elastics with yeah. you. <laughs> and did you ever play elastics? No, of yeah. course not. Are you kidding me? I told you to get the dining room chairs yeah. for the elastics. <laughs> Do you know what elastics are? Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm I'm young, but I'm not that young, yeah. yeah. But I was never very good at them. I jumped oh, the skills. You think good. with the height you would have been amazing? Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so the, the baby of the family. Um you very sporty growing up, but mainly soccer? Yeah, lots of soccer. Only because that's what my brother played, so joined soccer, but then my brother went to rugby. So I ended up at rugby, but my mum coached netball, umpired netball, So and my dad played rugby, my other brother played rugby, so we were always around sport, like Saturday was sport, then my brother got really good at rugby, so we started going to like reps on Sunday, so it was kind of, couldn't get away from sport growing up, just because of, yeah, our family dynamic. Mm. And well, and your mum dragged you to a netball game one day or like big, they were short of players or something. Is that how it started? Yeah, she coached all my friends. I played, I think I played soccer at the time, but she was at the school coaching all my friends and they were like really short for training and she said, please, can you just come? I do, like, I really want to do these practices but I can't do it with the numbers we've got. So I was like, okay. And I remember like grabbing the ball and sprinting down the court and trying to like do a layup or try to shoot, <laughs> try shoot the goal and my mum was standing there like, you can't, like, you can't run with that. I was like, you're five or six. And I was like, oh, pathetic. And I just used to think that, like, netball was for girly girls and, like, oh, I was you didn't like, like the yeah, skirts I didn't and... want to wear the skirt and I didn't want to, I don't know, it just wasn't my vibe. And then mum somehow, I don't actually know how, she enticed me to play the game on the weekend. And I ended up really, I remember really enjoying it and then asking if I could go back. Um, and then she was like, absolutely you can come back so then I went back and I never left the team and then I never left the sport so you you enjoyed it because you were good at it or is just something clicked and you were like oh this is a cool sport I think both yeah I think I enjoyed like the amount of teamwork that was involved and that you needed everybody to win the game whereas like when I was playing soccer you could kind of just like kick run and boot it in and you like half your team could not even be involved Whereas with netball, everybody's needed all of the time. And I think I really like that team aspect. Mm. And then did you just become obsessed with netball? <laughs> then I probably became overly obsessed. I ended up playing <laughs> too much netball. That's probably why I got broken. But yeah, I just ended up really liking it. So I played the rest of that year with my friends. And then the next year, my mum actually and her friends started their own little, we were called the Crown Gems. They started their own little netball club. And we went round and we got to design all our own dresses. So we, of course, being young girls, they were black and pink, like hot pink. Um, so that was really fun. And I just, I think all of the friendships I made, that's what made me enjoy the sport more. Mm. And you you were naturally good or? Oh, I think so. Without sounding up myself. No, no, like, no. I no, think so. Because no, I was really tall from a young age. And so I think they could just throw the ball into me because I played a lot of shooter back then, which I do not do now. Um, and I could just kind of put the ball into it because the goals were small. They were the Kids small hoops. goals. Yes, yeah, so I don't have to try that hard to get it in. So wow. it, that helped probably. I, I It must be hard not to like something that you're good at. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So what you, you um, sort of screwed your nose up then about the shooting thing. Why, why did you drift away from shooting? Shooting would be the glamour position. Yeah, right? I probably... Well, it was actually a coach that said to me, I don't think you're a shooter. I was like, no, I, I am. I'm like, what are you talking about? And she was like, no, I think you're a defender. And at that point, I had been going between goal attack and goal defence in games, which is weird. People don't normally do that. But I would go between the two, depending on where the team needed me. Then this one coach was like, you should stay down the defensive end. So I did. And, yeah, I was definitely a better defender than I was a shooter. 
And you're you're now the captain of the Mystics, the Northern Mystics, and this is the only the only ANZ team you've played in, right? Yeah. You've been in the team for like eight years or something. Yeah, since 2016. So, so how old were you then? Like 18? 18. 19, 18. Yeah. So you finish school, you, do you make all the rep teams, all the age group teams? Yeah, Netball New Zealand have got this like pathway of how to get to the top. And I was the athlete that did all the steps. So I played reps, then I went to the National Development Squad, and then I made New Zealand Secondary Schools, New Zealand Under-21s, ANZ, then Silver Ferns. It all happened like in this real nice linear pattern for me. And then, yeah, all my injuries came. <laughs> Yeah, when did they start? I was injured like throughout my whole kind of career, but my two major ones came in 2020. Mm, the Achilles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we will get to them because yeah. I, I think this is um maybe, I don't know, maybe an inspiring part of your story, like the comeback, <laughs> like it's um the sort of adversity and setback that, you know, it could it could finish some athletes off, right? Yeah. It really could. Okay, so um, so you finished school. You go to uh, university to become a teacher. You want to be a PE teacher? Yeah. You are a PE I'm teacher? I am a PE teacher, yeah. Yeah. How do you, yeah. How do you fit it in now? Um, are you full-time? No. I teach on a Wednesday morning before training, and our day off from Mystics is Thursday, so I teach all day Thursday. Oh, so one day a week? Yeah, one and a half <laughs> days. <laughs> Must be nice. And yeah, it is. And I, honestly, <laughs> teaching is so hard. And when I walk in the office some mornings and I just look around at my colleagues, I'm like, you guys are amazing. Like, they're always, no matter what is happening, they're just always so positive and upbeat. And it's really easy for me to walk in and be positive and upbeat. I'm there one day, or one and a bit days. <laughs> so I can walk out that door and I've got a whole week to reset. Because some days teaching are very challenging. But they're just amazing. Like, are you, actually are you, are you, amazing. Are you in the classroom at all? or no? Yeah. You are? Yeah. So I've got my own classes. Because health is only taught at my school. The juniors only have health once a week. Mm -hmm. So I'm just the health teacher for those kids. So they don't actually... They probably wouldn't even know I'm not there the whole week. Right. What, 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 what does health mean? They, like we do sexuality, drug education, whole water, heaps of stuff on whole water nutrition and like you with have to excuse my ignorance what's yeah. ha what's hold order is like it's a maori philosophy of health okay so it's teaching the kids that health isn't just physical so mental and emotional social spiritual and physical oh my god so, so what sort of ages what we teach whole order year seven eight nine and ten yeah. so from 11 to 15 16 Shit, that's good. There was none of that when I was I at know, school. I know, I know. It was it, anti a, 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 antidotal stuff that you'd have on the school bus on the ride to work yeah, with your mates. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, it's incredible. And I find I'm so passionate about teaching that stuff that sometimes I've got to like rein it in because I, I get not all 30 kids sitting in front of me are just as passionate. So sometimes I get really into it and they're like looking at me like I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you're passionate about it though. Yeah. So I thought you were like a PE teacher. Oh, we do health and PE. Oh, okay. So I only teach one PE lesson a week. The rest are all health. Because health is like what I'm really passionate about. Right. And w when you're teaching the kids health, what are like some of the bigger, big surprises you've got? Like are you surprised at like how advanced some of the kids are with that stuff that you're teaching already? Are you surprised at um, some of the things they've told you about their drug taking or... Um, I think I'd find it quite alarming. Probably the thing that surprised me the most is that so many kids don't know like their values and who they are. And like I think because I'm, I'm looking at it through my lens of a 27-year-old, but I really try to get... Some of them don't even know like their grandparents' names. Oh, Nana. I'm like, yeah, but Nana's got a name. Like, who's <laughs> Nana? Like, who is Nana? And I like, encourage them to go and have conversations with their family about where they come from and like who they are and things like that and that probably surprises me the most that there's so many that don't know and I, I do understand and appreciate that for a lot of people that does come later in life but yeah I do encourage the kids to try and find out a little bit more. Well that's cool, it must feel really rewarding like you're making a difference. Yeah it is, I, some days I walk away wanting to like never go back and I'm like what am I doing here <laughs> um, and then other days I leave going that was incredible and I can't wait to come back next week. Yeah, oh, that's nice. And you, you were at school teaching the day that you made the Silver Ferns? Yeah, I was. I was on placement, yeah, so I wasn't 
What's that, like a relief teacher? Yeah, placement is when you're still at uni, but you go into the school to like get work experience. Oh, like almost like an internship yeah, sort of Yeah, kind thing. of, yeah. Yeah, so talk us through that day. Were, were you on the, were you on the, did you know the team was being announced? Were you on the radar of the selectors? Um, I, was, <laughs> I always say, I don't know how, how I was selected. So I wasn't in the Silverfern squad. I was in the development squad. And I had been to the Youth World Cup and we'd won that. And then I had to have six months off because I had a fracture, like stress fracture in my back. And so I'd only just kind of got back to training with the Mystics. And then, so I knew it was being announced, but I didn't even bat an eyelid. I was like, it won't be me. Then I, yeah, my, I had an Apple Watch on and it came up like with the Silver Ferns coach ringing. And I was like, she'd only be ringing me for one reason. And I said to my boss, who's actually still my boss now, but he was teaching the class at the time. Can I go outside? Like <laughs> trying to get his attention. Like, yeah, and yeah. Then she told me that I had made the team to go to the Commonwealth Games. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. So who was that? that wasn't Dame Nolene at the time. That no, was the previous Janine Southby. Yeah. Right. So how long was the conversation? Like a minute? Yeah, yeah, very brief. I yeah. guess because she's got so many phone calls to get through, and she probably knew that at the time it was a bit of shock. So she was like, well, we're, we'll speak again. I just wanted to let you know, like, congratulations. Then I think it was at like the next day I had to be at, like, the launch. And I was like, oh, I'm on placement. Like, <laughs> i gotta, got to wrap this up somehow. But luckily I went on placement at my old high school. So everyone knew me there. So like, And my boss was my old PE teacher. So he was like, yeah, you go do whatever you need to do. That's amazing. So you take that phone call. Then um, who do you call first? What do you do? Well, then I've got to go back into class and finish the lesson. Oh, you went straight back yeah, into because class? Like, I can't just walk off and not go back in. So oh, I, just, I would have been making, it was a short phone call with the coach. Yeah. You could have made another five quick calls, yeah, partner, have. parents, whoever. Yeah, I went back in, did that. Then it was at lunchtime, not too far away. So then I just went to my car. I think I rang my mum first. I always rang my mum first for anything. So I rang her, and then I think my dad, and then my auntie. And what do you like on those calls? You burst into tears? Um, this, is a, this is a big thing, right? Making yeah, the national is. team. Um, I think because I didn't know it was coming. It was more of a shock. When I made like the New Zealand Under-21 team that I'd been working four years for, when I got that call, that was, that was probably more emotional because mm. of how much I'd put in to get there. Even though I had put in work for that team, it wasn't like I'd put in work directly to, that wasn't my goal necessarily. So it was more shock until I processed what had happened when I got home. Right, so you'd just gone through all the steps and this was the next step and it, maybe it came a bit quicker than what you... Yeah, like I thought I might have gone to like the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Mm -hmm. So the 2018 ones weren't really on my radar because I hadn't done anything with the Silver Ferns leading up to that phone call. Yeah. Where were they? Where were the, where were the 2018 Commonwealth Games? Australia. Oh, the Gold, Gold Coast. Coast ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How did the Silver Ferns get on? The worst we'd ever done, fourth. Fuck. And at that time, like, the Silver Ferns hadn't ever done bad. So there was this, this media frenzy questioning whether we had passion for the, for the dress if we... You know, if we wanted to be there, if we had pride, there was lots going on around us because of that result. Oh, that's so tough. So, yeah, I've, I've had all sorts of people on the podcast, including um, Susie Bates, the cricketer. Yes. And she, she went to the Olympics as um, like a teenage girl playing um, basketball for New Zealand. So she went over there and the, 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 no one was expecting anything from the team, so mm. it was fine. But it must be so much pressure if you go over there and you're expected to medal. Absolutely. And especially the Silver Ferns, right? Yeah. They're, all, they're known in this country to win or to be there or thereabouts. So to get fourth was like, what has happened? So did you have like a, a game that you had to play for someone gets bronze, someone... Oh, yep. sorry for bringing this up. I know. I should have done my research and then not brought it no, up at all. No, it's okay. I, because I was so young, I didn't... How old were you? Oh, I don't know, 20? Yeah. 21? Because I, and I was so new to the team, I didn't have to wear the brunt of it. I wasn't doing the media interviews. I wasn't a leader in the team, so the leaders wore a lot of it. And I was on the bench for most of the games, and I'd come in for maybe half a game, a quarter of a game. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't wear what our senior players mm. had to wear. Who, who were the seniors at the time? Uh, Maria Falau, oh, yeah. 
Katrina Grant, mm. and we and we had quite a we had a different team. Like we didn't have Laura Langman wasn't in at that point. She came back when Knowles came back. Casey Corpor came back when Knowles came back. So the team was. Shit, it was a good team, eh? Hey? There's yeah. a lot of big names you mentioned. Yeah, so it was interesting times. Yeah, oh, yeah. and uh, because it happened at the early stage of your career, like you probably learn a lot from it. You may not may not feel like it at the time. Oh, massively, yeah. and especially. Um, as a leader now, looking back at those times and just what they had to go through, and yeah, I've taken a lot from that experience mm. more off the court. Yeah. Did you have a lot to do with Maria Filao? Was she in the Mystics yeah, with you as well? Yeah, she was in the Mystics, and I yeah. started. She's awesome. She um, she was so much older when I started, so she was kind of like took us her and Cat took us under their wing, and we were just like there was like four of us fresh into the team when we started Mystics. Mm. Those two were like the mother hens, and they were so awesome. I was I felt so privileged to be in a team that had these massive superstars. Like growing up watching them, like I never thought I'd get to play with them. And I remember going home and being like to my mum, who obviously loved netball, being like, "Mum, like those are my teammates. We used to like <laughs> watch them on TV and be like, how cool are they? And now like, you know, I'm training alongside them day in day out. Yeah, were you, were you, were you like a fan girl when you're at oh, school? Oh, massively, you? massively. Which is so funny now That's because so cool. I know her and like I know the older girls now. But back then I was like, man, like you are mm. so cool. Are you, were you were you in um, in the team with Maria when? Because um, I met her a couple of times. She's lovely, but mm. this was when she was Maria Tutai. Yeah. And then she married Israel Falau. Were you were you in the team with her when all the other homophobic stuff? Fuck, yep. that must have been intense. Yeah. She, I feel like she, even though she had nothing to do with it at all. Yeah, she I took feel it. Like she bore yeah, the brunt on did. behalf of New Zealand in a way. And I guess it just showed her character. She turned up to training, um, always smiling, always positive, and just did her job. And it would have, I can't imagine how hard that would have been to do when you're dealing with all of the stuff away from your work. But yeah, she was incredible. That's some next level professionalism there, oh, isn't it? Insane, like yeah. actually insane mm. to turn up and. And I guess because we saw her in the changing rooms and at training and she was still the same positive person that people got to see on game day when she's playing in front of however many people. Mm. So, yeah, huge ups to her for yeah. that. Oh, good stuff. Okay, so, yeah, so you make the Silver Ferns. You don't want to come with games. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry, I don't sorry. Have one of those. Um, And then, so, was there COVID just after that? Is that pretty much, are we, where COVID? are we at now? Probably Is this like, week? Two, 2020 started yeah, 2020. so two years later yeah so you play the silver ferns consistently over those i was in the team consistently from then onwards till 2020 when i got injured but i didn't always play so the i would go on tours and like i'd be training and i'd be with the team but i wouldn't always get to take the court Right, so they were sort of like bleeding you to be like the next generation of player. Yeah. The yeah. sort of player that you're fearful of now when you're out. Yeah, 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 exactly <laughs> that. Exa and, and like, especially me, I'm very competitive. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's it like on those um, Silver Fern tours? Do, do you guys have a lot of fun? Yeah, the girls are awesome. It's just like going away with your mates. Like, there's really no other way to describe it. You're friends, all there for a common goal. Um, one thing that I really took away from Laura Langman when she when I was in building up for the 2019 yeah what's 2019 Netball World Cup she was the captain and I hadn't I didn't know her at all I hadn't done any netball with her and I always thought she was this real serious hardcore Harry Harder because that's how she plays netball like she's just a gun and I remember thinking oh how fun are you going to be off the court. Honestly, off the court, fun as, relaxed, could ha like heaps of jokes, really inclusive, just an awesome person to lead your team. Mm. And one thing I've taken from her is that, like on the court you c and at training, it's like serious and we're here for a reason. But uh, you don't need to take that attitude off court. And I think that's what the ferns do well. Right, just that balance. Yeah, because right. you need it. When you're on tour for like three weeks, you want to be able to have mm. some fun. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. It's not healthy otherwise, eh? No. Nah. And and do you do you share a room with someone else on those? Yeah. yeah. You always share a room, and it's always different people. They mix it up, nice. do they? Yeah, I think the only time you really get to choose is at like a world, like a pinnacle event, because you're there with that roommate for so long, and it's a pinnacle event. So that I think they want you to feel really comfortable in your environment, mm. even though we do like because we're all mates, so it doesn't matter who you end up with. But I think they just like to give that. 
bit of like freedom. What would um, your previous roommate say about you? Are you messy? Are you? No, I am. So, you want to know Kate Burley? She used to be my roommate when we were growing up. She was messy. She's good now because she's got a Navy boyfriend. So, you know, he whipped her into shape quick smart. Um, I'm really tidy. I make this noise with my throat when I'm like trying to itch the back of my throat, but I do that in like my a, sleep. Uh, 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 yeah, that. Yeah, right. that noise. I've had a sinus operation because my sinus is raw up the wazoos, so I don't snore anymore. But I used to snore and make that noise, so I could imagine that was horrible for anyone rooming with me. <laughs> well, there's nothing worse than rooming yeah, with a I know, snorer. Yeah, I know. Anna Harrison actually like sneakily told Miss Six Management once, please <laughs> never put me with Michaela. <laughs> I didn't find that out till like way later when I was like, why do we never get to room? And she was like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, um, well... You're annoying. You think they'd try and pair snorers together or we'll give yeah. snorers their own room. Yeah. Does, it, does the captain get their own room? No. no. We all share. Everyone there's, shares. there's 10 of us in a team. Well, yeah. 12 if you're with the Ferns, 10 if you're with your ANZ team. Mm. So we all just buddy up. And what do you do for fun after games? You never hear about the um, the, the netball girls getting in any sort of trouble, eh, in terms of shenanigans and no. antics? To be honest, it depends on if it's mystics. We go home, see, like We're not the party team at all. We... It's halfway through the season. We haven't even had one night on the Bears together. We just, it's just not how we roll. Um, I don't actually know why. Maybe we're boring. Mm. Um, and fans as well, like this, you just kind of go home. If we're on tour, you go back to your hotel and you normally got a game soon. So you go back, recover, and then you move on to the next city the next day. And if the tour's ended, like you go home. So yeah, there's not really big nights out. So there's no, like, missing curfews and things like that. Wow. Well, I suppose that's professionalism, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, we just don't in, have in, that culture. Yeah. Like, you know when it actually irks me. You know when you watch rugby and they're in the sheds after a game having a few beers and, like, they're just relaxing. Like, in my mind, that's relaxing. We do not do that at all. And I feel like there's this thing around, like, being women... We shouldn't drink in our uniform because how, how people might perceive that. But yet the All Blacks post on Instagram are like celebrating a win with a beer and there's nothing wrong with that. Well, there's even like stone like a signs this, in the background. Uh, yeah, it's but funny, funny you say that. I like, feel like people would have a problem if we did it or I think that's the perception so we don't. Cause I've, um, I've had Maya uh, yes. Wilson on the podcast. She said pretty much exactly the same sort of thing. She said the, she feels like there's this... Um, sort of judgment about you guys even if you go out for dinner and have wine or something someone will be like oh they were mind blowing right like I should be able to have a wine if I feel like it and if I'm in my kit does it really matter but it does matter there's this perception that it does matter hmm because there's a difference between um having a wine after your game and then you know behaving badly after having too many wines there's a very very clear difference absolutely there's a massive difference yeah and yeah i don't know what it is about that but yeah well good on you for talking about it because i think the more we talk about it and address it the more chance there is of changing that yeah i think so yeah um okay so what happened during the COVID years so was all games suspended was the anz cap still on or the anz was played yeah at auckland netball center under real strict guidelines with no spectators Okay, so so you weren't injured then? I was. Yep. Oh, you were injured. Yeah, I got injured. I got injured in twenty twenty, January in England, and I think the ANZ started around March ish, March April. Okay, yeah. Let's talk about that injury in England then. So, yeah. ja- so this was your l- left Achilles, right? Right Achilles. Yep. So January twenty twenty, you injure your right Achilles. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, Achilles. That's yeah. The, the Achilles is like where it connects onto like the heel bone and. Okay, so I you land the wrong leg. way, or? Um, well, it's like a middle-aged man injury, so <laughs> careful. <laughs> That's what my surgeon told me anyway. Um, no, nah, I was warm. It was like the first quarter. We were having a practice game against England A leading up to the series. And I just like went to change direction. And then I looked back to like be like, who's, who's kicked me? Which is like classic Achilles rupture pain. And no one was there. And then I just remember, <laughs> I probably looked like a looney tune. I just remember walking off, yelling at my physio that I had ruptured my Achilles. And I kept saying that like constantly. And he's like trying to be like, yeah, okay, we'll do the test. I'm like, you don't need to do the test. Like, I'm telling you, I've ruptured my Achilles. And I'm like, low key freaking out. 
Because you know the severity of yeah, it. Yeah, I know that that's like, I'm, I've am i just, well, because I was a reserve for the 2019 World Cup. I went all the way to England. I wasn't needed. I came home. I was then in the series at the end of 2019, and I felt like it was really my time to like wave the flag for my position and to mm. show them that I was ready. And to know that I, and I'd been training really, really well, and I just, the entire summer, I had done nothing but train. I was like, I'm taking this opportunity with both hands. So to know that I just essentially ripped off my bib and gave it away, like that's what I knew I had just lost. So it wasn't even the injury. The injury didn't like hurt massively. It was more the shock of what I'm losing. Why does it take so long to recover from it? Um, you have Well, you don't have to have surgery, but I chose to have surgery. It's just like a nine-month, like you can't start running until like four or five months because it's got, the tendon's got to heal. Then by the time you start running, you've got to learn to then jump again because the tendon's used, like it's so elastic that you need it to jump well, to move well, to take off, accelerate. So you need time to build all that back up. But for four or five months, you can't do anything. Mm apart from upper body weights. Are you, are you good with patience and following like physio orders? Uh, <laughs> you don't depends on what physio you ask. Some <laughs> might say no, some might say yes. Um, with this I was yeah. because I didn't want to re-hurt it. Yeah. But we didn't have any, what's it called, like obstacles. Like if you were walking at three weeks, Without crutches, well, it's actually more like eight weeks. But I ticked at every single, like, tick box, oh, at, at four weeks you should be doing that. I was doing it. So I got all the way through my first rehab with, like, no complications. Mm. So I was, I would say I was patient and I w was very diligent. If I was told to do 50 of this and 50 of that, that's what I did. Right. So so, so when it when it happens... um. Like, how do you react immediately? You see, you know, you, you cool down, the adrenaline starts to wear off. Then what? Um, <laughs> then we, I got to, taken to hospital just to, like, check that it was just that. So me and the mental skills person in Ferns, Rod, he ended up being my buddy. He has driven me around lots of places because of various things. And so we go off to the hospital in England, and if anyone's ever been in an English A&E on a Saturday night... We witnessed a few interesting <laughs> things, which was fun because it allowed us to, like, you know, have conversations about other things. Um, and then, yeah, we just put on a plane the next day back to New Zealand to s start my recovery. But you with this guy, Rod. Are you are you um, sort of laughing and joking at the other the drunk people? Oh, we or? are laughing and joking. We've got like guys' blood coming out of everywhere it's like spewing behind us intoxicated <laughs> people and we're just sitting there like thinking well i'm like i guess it could be worse mm. like but but deep down you must be devastated right yeah yeah and i remember the first thing i did again was ring my mum. i'm still on the sideline i was like, I, need, I just need to talk to somebody that's not in this bubble ring her i'm like hey mum. it's early in the morning over there i don't mm. care what the time is i just ring and she's like what are you doing? I was like, I've ruptured my eye, Kelly. She's like, oh, oh, that's a shame. Like, you'll be okay. I was like thinking, first of all, if I could come through the phone and like... Strangle. Yeah, like, you, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying to you? And I'm like, mum, like, I'm out. Yeah, for a short, yeah, a couple of days. Like, she, like, mm. she didn't really know. And I was like, no, mum, like, I'm on a, I'll be coming back home and I'll be having surgery and I will not be doing anything for the rest of the year. And then she just started crying and then she was like, okay, it's okay. Like, then mum's like, do you need me to fly to England and come and get you? I was like, no, like, I'm, no, I don't need you to do that. Like, I'll get myself home. Um, just pick me up from the airport. And she was like, okay, like, whatever you need, I'm here. So do you, when she starts crying, do you start crying? Because you must have felt well, like so honest, far away I was from... probably already crying when yeah. I was drunk, but I actually don't know if I was crying. I was just trying to explain to her what an Achilles rupture was. Mm. And from a from a professional perspective, that guy Rod, the mental skills coach, yeah. is there anything that, that he says or does that's impactful? Um, or is it just like being nah, there as a support? he just tries to, we just chat about random stuff. He He's highly trained. He probably knows that I don't want to sit there and talk about it all right now. So we just chewed the fat about everything but pretty much. 
Yeah, because I suppose, it's, I mean, it is what it is. Right? Yeah, exactly. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. Apart from mm. try to figure out a plan to move forward, yeah. Right. So you come home. Um, so again, this is early 2020. Yeah. Um, so, so lockdown starts. Are you sort of recovering on crutches during... Yeah, I... That must have been a relief in a way because you feel like you're not missing out yeah, on anything. Yeah, yeah, kind of. But then I've got nobody to help me rehab. So the day... I came out of my moon boot, to, and that's when I was like, right, we're going to ramp up the rehab now. I came out of my moon boot, and the next day we went into lockdown. So I was so like grateful for my trainer, Guy, and the physio, Mark. They would be on Zoom with me every day or every second day, taking me through all of my exercises. My dad built me a bench press out of scaffold. Um, he built me a leg press out of some plywood in this weird exercise machine thing we had. And then, yeah, Mark and Guy literally sat on Zoom and were like, right, do this, do that, do this, do that, and just coached me through my entire rehab. Oh, your parents sound amazing. Oh, they're ama- I'm, so, I'm so incredibly lucky there. Are they, they still together? Yeah, they're still together. Yeah. They, and they became, if anyone has ever had to have their parents help them with their training. I ended up having to be a coach because I had to coach them how to play and pass a netball so that I could train properly because you couldn't have anybody ask. We lived together, so it needed to be them. And, like, I would need them to pass to each other so I could practice intercepting. And uh, <laughs> I spent half the I spent half the time coaching them how and where to pass so that I could do a proper intercept. Then I just went and bought a rebounder thing that I didn't need them as much. But, yeah, they helped me with all of my rehab. And, like, no matter what time of day, what they were doing, I'd be like, right, this time, tomorrow we've got to go. That'd spend two hours with me an hour with mm. me helping me with my rehab. You, you seem very driven, even perhaps a little bit stubborn. Is, do you think that's from your 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 mum's mum's side? They're Croatian. Yeah, they're Croatian. Is that a Croatian yeah, thing? Yeah, they're staunch and they're stubborn. Yeah, yeah. Is there a bit of that in you? you yeah, absolutely. What, what, about, what about your <laughs> Probably dad? Probably too much sometimes. Oh, oh no, but it's got you where you are, and it's yeah. got you this um incredible resilience and sort of fighting power that you mm. got. What about from your dad's side? What are your traits there? Yeah. That you, I I would say I am more my dad, but get the stubbornness and the Croatian the, the Croatian <laughs> fire from my mum. I'm very loud and abrupt, um, but my dad is extremely hardworking. Not to say my mum's not, no. But my dad is very hardworking, and just he's hard to explain. He is he's incredible, and I've learned a lot from him. And he's a lot more patient than I am. And he thinks things through a lot more than I necessarily do. But, yeah, he's very hardworking, diligent, and he's provided so much for our family. So, yeah, I would say I'm like him in ways, but you're yeah, like mum too. Oh, what a nice compliment. And what a nice mix. Yeah, yes. I, uh-huh. Whereas I'd say my other brother <laughs> James is more like my mum, but he wouldn't <laughs> really? like me saying that. <laughs> well, what do they do? What do your older brothers do? Um, my brother Sam, he's an engineer. And my other brother, James, works in, like, demolition. Both super yeah. successful, like, yeah. really successful. And we're all super close as a family, which is nice. Yeah, that's neat. Okay, so so the 2020 year, so you, you, you're rehabbing. You're doing everything you're supposed to do. Um, so the, the mystic season continues. A, a, yeah, how weird is that? Are you still involved in the squad? Like, <laughs> are you – no? Or yeah, just... no, I am. And that's probably where that stubbornness and um, – love for netball really flourished in 2020 so you're just wandering around on crutches or a moon boot, oh, just being yeah. in that environment yeah setting so up my, to meetings yeah i i went to everything apart from gym because i had to do all my own rehab i wouldn't go to their gyms because i needed like one-on-one kind of support and help so i would do all of my rehab away from the team and then i would turn up to all of the team trainings and team meetings i literally didn't miss any I was there every game and every meeting. And I ended up being an assistant coach because Helene, our coach at the time, we didn't have one. So I ended up being assistant coach and manager. I did all these random jobs. Why, why um, with the benefit of hindsight, why did you? Why were you then involved and hands-on with this, when there's nothing you could do? Was it- I just love my team. And I, and I think because I knew I wanted to be back. And I knew the only way I could be back is if I still develop my netball brain and you can develop that when you're not playing by watching by having coaching conversations to be like okay if I had gone here or done that would that have changed that and I feel like I play netball differently now 
than I did before because I understand the game better. Mm. Well, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I suppose it's also, um, even if this is subliminal, it's like, hey, don't forget about me. I'm still here. Oh, absolutely. And I'm well aware of that. And I think out of sight, out of mind. And I was, I was not leaving this realm. I want to be part of this team. And I want people to want me to be part of this team. That's hunger, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> wow, that's the Croatian. Yeah, that is stubbornness. <laughs> that's awesome. So you, so it gets to the point where you're, you're rehabbed and you're playing again? Yeah, so it got eight and a half months down, the, well, got eight months down the track. And I was able to start, like, training with, like, the team again. I somehow got put back, so I got injured. I didn't, in January, pl didn't play the ANZ season, but they rename at the end of the ANZ season a Silver Fern squad. And I got put back in the squad because I, they knew I was going to be ready for the international season in some sort of capacity. So I ended up going to the trials that they have or like the camp they had. And I ended up making like the development team, which is called NZA. And we were going to play the Ferns, the men, and I'm not sure who else. And so that was eight and a half months post rupture. So I was essentially back. Mm. And we were in another warm up game against like a put together team before the Cadbury series. And then that's when I ruptured my other Achilles. <laughs> so same injury again, but on the other On the foot. other leg, yeah. <laughs> like what are, like what are the chances? I know. It was like literally nine months to the day. Like it was like literally nine months later, bang. And, and straight away, you're not here. Yeah. Oh, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, right? Oh, my God. I actually didn't know this for months till months later, but I just stood there with my head in my hands, sobbing, and then just yelling F-bombs, like F-bomb after F-bomb after F-bomb. To who? And just to yourself? Just my, well, out loud to like the universe, yeah. whoever was listening, whoever had brought such misery upon me. And the goal shoot, because I was playing Goldie, I think, the goal shoot thought that I was swearing at her and that, like, I I think she thought I thought she'd hurt me, like, she'd kick me, but I, I knew I had just changed direction. It had gone. She wasn't even anywhere near me. Mm. And it wasn't until months later. I don't even know who she is to apologise. Be like, I wasn't swearing <laughs> at you. Like, so if the goal shoot from that random game is listening, I know it wasn't you. It was all me. So, um... Yeah, so then what? Are you with that guy Rod again? Yeah, Rod's there. Oh, he's there. Rod's there. Oh, yeah. um, see, Rod is always there in times of need. He always is there to help me. Is, is, he, is he like a team mentor a schools coach? Or is yeah, he your personal? No. <laughs> Seems like he's got time for nobody he, else. No, he doesn't. He's, he's, he may as well be on my payroll, eh? Because he has helped me through some oh. things. But yeah, he's there and then... <laughs> and anyway, how is it different this time? Or is it not different? Oh, it's... And the, and the same physio was there and the same strength and conditioner were there. Um, except this time, like, all our hearts broke because, like, I had just, like, literally, it was my first game. Like, I'd only just got back. Um, so we all really felt the pain of that one. Um, and I remember Rod, Rod <laughs> took me back to the hotel and, like, I just remember sitting on the floor of where we're in Palmerston North of all places. I was just like, oh, why couldn't have we been in Auckland? Um, and I just remember sitting on the hotel floor and just being like, get me out of here. Like, get me home. But I couldn't get home because it was at night time. And I wasn't. And so I met my mum again. I'll come and get you. I was like, no, don't. I don't want to sit in a car for however many hours. Stay at home. I'll fly in the morning. Mm. And then, yeah, Rod took me to the airport and I flew home. And I actually remember crouching down like, the terminal to get to the baggage claim and my parents were there and I just remember like I don't know what came over me but I saw my mum and my dad and I just like cried this loud like someone you know when someone had like passed away and yeah. there's just horrible loud cries that was me in the middle of the airport and I remember the article went live on Silverfern's page and people had commented like yeah I seen her in the airport she was really devastated and another lady was like, yeah, I was on the plane on the way home with her. She didn't stop crying the whole way. And I was like, yeah, okay, thanks for telling everybody. <laughs> like Snitches. no one else needed to know that. <laughs> but yeah, the second one was hard to deal oh, with. Especially because yeah. it was like, I'd only just got back. Like I'd only been back two weeks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the timing, the, just the timing. And also, you know, 
like you're fresh off that road to recovery, yeah. so you know exactly what's involved exactly. all over again. Exactly, I knew week by week exactly what to expect. Except the first one took me nine months to recover from. The next one took me eighteen. The first one had no hurdles or obstacles. The other one only had hurdles and obstacles. What were the What were they? Oh, it was like everything. Um, oh, everything and, that could go wrong. Uh, yeah, went go. wrong. Like the scar wasn't healing properly. And then, like, the pain, like, I haven't had one, even since that rupture in 2020, I haven't had a pain-free day in that Arkele since, even, like, to this day. And so dealing with that, and then that's when I got diagnosed with the cirrhotic arthritis, and then they ultrasound my Arkele's, and they, then my rheumatologist is like, oh, your Arkele's could snap at any time. Like, all of this Doppler is inflammation in the Arkele, so we had to completely halt all, and I just started running again, and I was like, ugh. So I had to completely stop all running and jumping, so go, like, way back in my rehab, get medication on board to get, hopefully settle down the inflammation. Like, it was just a really long emotional mm. process. How, I guess, yeah, so the day after, you, you're crying in the plane, as we know, <laughs> thanks, social media. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God, is there, is there nowhere that's sacred? I know, I know. <laughs> And then you're crying at the airport. When when do the when do the tears stop? When do you manage to sort of compartmentalize it and go, okay, this um, is like the next day. Yeah, really? Yeah, I don't. Cry. Yeah, the next day. I'm not a big crier. You just good at getting it out and yeah, putting like a line stump the it. And then my dad actually took me to my surgeon's office, and we the next day, which actually was that day, Dad was out mowing the lawns, and I was like, Dad, shoes wrong. We got to go. Dad's like. Like, I don't even think, no, if he turned the lawnmower off, he raced inside. He was like, yeah, yeah, got his keys, got in the car. And, like, we headed off for the appointment. So, yeah, I like, when I know I've got a plan in place, I can kind yeah. of move forward. But how was, how was your mental health over that time? Um, it got to a point, actually, where I did really struggle. And I'd, I'd bought my own house by this time. So I'd moved out and... <laughs> My, I love my parents so much that I bought a house four doors up from them. <laughs> so I remember one day, like, it probably got to the point where I couldn't hold in how I was feeling anymore. Like, I was really, really struggling. And so I just remember, like, building up the car, and which is so funny because I'm so close with my parents. Like, they know everything about me. Even if I've made mistakes growing up as a kid, like dumb things, you know, that young kids, teenagers mm. do, I've confessed to my parents and be like, oh, and like, they don't need to know. Mm. Like it's all, I, oh, didn't, you're an I didn't hurt anybody, but I'd always have to tell my parents because like, yeah. I just was. That's a relationship we had, and that's why I understand why like people say about mental health. Just ask for help. I was like, I've got the most amazing relationships with my parents, and even I struggled to ask for help. Mm. But I finally built up the courage to go down there, and I just sat there, and I just like yeah, I was like, I'm struggling, and I just remember bawling my eyes out, and I think I was like five or six months post rupture, so like. I'd been on the rehab journey a while and they just like, t boom, TV went off, full attention on me and were like, we've got you. We know, like, if you want to give up, we don't blame you. Like, you've been through enough. Like, you can stop. And I remember thinking, I don't want to stop though. And they were like, sweet. Like, what do we need to do? We've got you. And that's when I think they cranked up the netball training partner mm. mode and were like, we'll do whatever it takes to help you. Like, what do you need from us? And I was just like, to be honest, I don't need anything from you. I just need you to know I'm not okay. But I will be okay. Like, don't worry about me. I just need you to know that I'm struggling. Mm. Yeah, cause it's a tough one, because eh? I suppose the two options are, A, just, just giving up, mm. which is understandable, or B, just plowing on through. But you know how fucking hard <laughs> the, the road ahead is. Yeah. Is that what you were just, like, just daunted by that? Yeah, I and... Just knowing that I was doing like the same thing day in, day out. And I was going to mystics training and with like this real positivity still. Because now I'm in my second season on the bench for mystics too. So I've just watched my teammates do a whole season without me. And now I've got to watch them do a whole nother season without me. And I loved going to training, but man, it took a lot some days to put on this real... Because no one wants this mopey, sulky <laughs> who's person. A, who's a sad girl like, in the mood? Yeah, <laughs> stay home if you're going to sulk. Um, so I made a real effort to like try and be like positive for them. Mm -hmm. But then I got to the point where like then I'd come home and I had none for myself. I had no positive energy to give myself. So realising that was probably huge for me as well. And then also realising that 
once I told my parents, it was easier to keep talking about it and to keep being like, to keep saying, yeah, I'm not good today or I'm okay today and just keep trying to find ways to like bring joy to my own life. Yeah, how, how did you do that? Just by trying to do things. My parents have got a boat. So like we, I remember we'd go out on the boat quite a bit and just like being out on the ocean was nice mm. and just doing things that weren't netball or weren't rehab because they took up. Yeah. So much of my day. <laughs> Why, um, what did keep you going? Why didn't you give up? I mean, you know, because you, you, you're very good at netball, but it's not like who defines, it's not what yeah. defines you. Like, yeah. you've got a great job as a teacher. You've got some qualifications behind you. Yeah. I just love it. Yeah. And, like, I think I'd had, like, 11, 11 caps in the Silver Ferns at that point, and I really, I really wanted more, and I knew I could contribute to the, like, the greater good of a team. And I really wanted to see myself achieve more. And at that time I was young and like I knew I, I had time. If I was like 30, oh, don't get me wrong, I would have been hang, hanging up the boots and been like, see you later. <laughs> but because I was young enough to make a comeback, that's kind of what kept me going, knowing that I had time. Mm. Oh, it's inspir- the drive is inspirational, uh, yeah, especially from where, like, from where you are now and when you, what you've been through since coming back. Um, is this the biggest adversity you've ever been through in your life? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yep. And that's the thing, and that's probably another thing that I really, really struggled with. It happened just before COVID, so you're seeing people's lives get turned upside down every single day. You hear stories in the media of all these people losing jobs, losing family members and not being able to be by their family members' sides. Like, you just saw all of this. And then so it played into, who am I to complain? Mm. Like, Perspective. Because what's happened to me is actually nothing compared to other people. But it was so hard because to me it was the end of my world. Mm. So I was like balancing, like trying not to talk about it to other people because of what other people are going through. So it was like this weird conflicting time. Mm. In the world, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then it was a weird, conflicting time in my little world. Yeah, in misery, misery comparisons were yeah, a dangerous game. I know. Over. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, "Oh, I've got nothing to complain about, really." Like, <laughs> but you still do, though. Yeah, but it, that was weird yeah. and hard and to navigate. What were the? Um, did that guy Rod give you any any like useful tips or tricks or pointers? That yeah, we talked a lot. The one thing that like he itched, he said it once, but it somehow itched onto my brain was how many times have you played and trade netball in your whole entire life? I was like, oh, I'd hate to know, mm. like thousands. And he's like, how many times have you ruptured your Achilles? And I was like, oh, well, twice. He's like, well, so the odds or like the percentage is so, so slim. And because I did have like a bit of PTSD after my, uh, my second Achilles rupture, like any time that someone would like trip up, my heart would pound at like 100 miles an hour and I would like start like sweating. And then I like couldn't watch the training for a little bit and I had to like regulate and I could watch again. And I just had this fear that every single person, every time they slightly hurt, like fell or did something, had hurt themselves like badly. Um, so I had to like get over there. Mm. But then, yeah. And so when I came back, I just had that in my mind every time I was warming up. And I was like, you've got to be fearless. Otherwise, there's no point being in this training. So I would just yeah. dump those feelings and train. Yeah, 100%. And what biggest learnings about yourself? Are you tougher than what you thought you were? Or oh, I always knew I was tough. <laughs> I always knew I was tough. <laughs> but but th- th- this is like next level tough. Though. Yeah. This is a lot to be thrown at one person. Yeah. Um, I probably just learned that if you want something, you can, you can get after it. And it taught me that I actually really do enjoy what I do mm. and that when it was taken away from me, I was devastated because I love it so much. Um, so it's nice to know that I actually enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah, that's saying you don't know what you've lost until it's gone. Yeah. Did did you have any? Um, I know there was a lot of like physical therapy, but what about like mental therapy? You go do any therapy or anything uh, during this time? Yeah, I I def- we've got this really awesome. Oh, we've got like a players association, and through them we can reach out to counsellors. So I did reach out to a couple, but people do say that like you don't always connect mm. with somebody. Yeah, sometimes it's, when I started therapy, that's yeah. what um, some some friends said to me. They said it's like going on a a Tinder date. Yeah. <laughs> you got to so, weed the review. We yeah. find the right one. I met my man on Bumble, so I understand. But yeah, I, so I had a few conversations with different ones, but I didn't feel like it really landed with me. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I just went back yeah. to my mate Rod because he like he's also like he's not there to be like a counselor. He's there to like help us with like our performance mindset and things like that. Mm. And so I really tried not to go to him because I just wanted to have a cry and wanted to understand. But then I realised, well, to be honest, I can go back to my friend Rod. Mm. So who, who is this guy? He's come up a lot. What's his last name? Uh, What's his? Corbin. He Rod, does lot. Rod Corbin, yeah. mental skills coach for... He ne- does like lots with cricket, hockey, netball. Right. He does lots with lots of different sports. I'm going to have to get him on the podcast. Get him on. You've, you've spoken very highly about yeah, him today. Because he, like, because he is involved in all of my injuries. <laughs> so, yeah, like, you know, he needs a mention. And um, I guess so, so, so you get over both the Achilles. When, when do you start playing again? When's that? Is that? Where are we at now? Is it the start of... That would have been... So once I got over that, it would have, we would have been 2022. 2022. So and two you, years And um, that was when the, um, the Silver Ferns won um, a silver medal at the Commonwealth Games. I yeah. I that was in Birmingham. Yeah. So you, I, I played that 2022 ANZ season, but I didn't play that well. <laughs> Okay, so it's yeah, so for the mystics. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. It was my first year back in two back years. Again. And, like, I played every game, and I didn't play bad, but I didn't play, like, how I normally would play. Yeah. Why was that? Had you lost, like, match fitness or...? No, I was, I was fit. Like, yeah. I was really fit because all I was doing was running. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, playing, yeah, is it, is playing I, fitness a different sort of thing? I just, my skill set was probably not as sharp as it needed mm. to be. Yeah. I would say it was the main thing. Okay, so you're back playing again, um, but you weren't good enough to be selected for nah. the Silver Ferns. No, nah. um, which I knew as well. Like when yeah. I, I was gutted I didn't make the, any squads, but I wasn't surprised. If that yeah. makes sense. Like, it, I I didn't cry. I didn't think, oh man, I wish I like I didn't. I was like, I I don't deserve to be there. Yeah, and I I knew that, so it was it was okay. Okay, so did did you watch the games though? They were oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, a big netball fan over here. Right, and and I suppose they're all your friends and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So you didn't have a sense of like FOMO when they won a medal? No, no, no. Okay, they deserved to be there, and they had to work really hard for that medal. And they, yeah, yeah. And then well, what about twenty twenty three? That was the netball World Cup. Oh uh, um, yeah, you missed out on that as well. Yeah, I did indeed. <laughs> <laughs> me, I did indeed. <laughs> that one hurt. That one uh, cut real deep. Yeah, did it? Why did that one hurt? Um, I thought that in twenty twenty three. This is obviously my personal opinion. I'm not a selector or anything. I thought that I had had the best year of netball I'd ever had in my life. Um, I, I, and I felt like I was. I felt like I was the best wing defence in the ANZ. Mm. I was turning over good ball. I was attacking well. I was leading down the defensive end well. I just felt like I was on and oh. I was like firing. And, and Mystics won last year. And right? we won. So the, the, the Netball World Cup. So that was after the yeah. ANZ competition. Yeah. So oh, okay. I, I remember, I remember being by my, I knew that squads and stuff was getting announced. Like I wasn't in any squad, so I didn't get any communication, but obviously my friends know. So I'm like, when is, I'm texting them. When are we? When is everyone finding out what's the go? Because I know. When am I getting my call? <laughs> I know that girls find out before media, right? Because like you've got to. You can't yes, just find yeah, out because yeah. you're reading the news. And I remember my phone didn't ring. And I remember sitting in the New World car park, like by my house, and the the media release like came out with the names of people that had been selected, and like I was not even like a training partner. I was I was nowhere. I was nothing. And I remember bawling my eyes out because I just thought, man, out of any time in my entire netball career for any team I've ever wanted, I wanted that more than anything. And I had worked so hard to get that and to not get it, I was, yeah. Then I didn't even make the Silver Fern squad. <laughs> if, like they came back from the Netball World Cup and I wasn't even in the squad. And I and that's when it dawned on me, oh. I'm not. If I can play like that and still not be wanted, oh, I'm out. They just don't want me at all. Mm. Did you think that was an age thing, or do, do, do they give you any? Because I know the All Blacks give um, like dropped players or players oh, that are on the fringe some work on. Oh, I give everyone gets feedback. Yeah. Yeah. What sort of what what feedback did you get? No. Oh, get more ball, defensively, like you know, just just netball specific feedback mm. that everyone would get. How long, how long were you upset for before it turned to like a rage? <laughs> I I remember posting in my family group chat being like, I didn't make it. And then going, I was at the supermarket to go home and cook dinner. I remember just going to my mum's and just probably raging then a bit. 
and and not raging and then when I take a step back there's two Karen you've had on your podcast and there's Kate Heffernan mm. they don't play they well, last year in 2023 they didn't play wing defence in the ANZ but they can play wing defence at Ferns level like the coach will side them there so when I look at the when I put take my emotional hat off and put my selectors hat on I can understand why like why I wasn't selected mm. and I understand that those two cover that position and they're incredible athletes mm. so after I raged about myself when I stepped back and kind of took my yeah put my coach's hat on I can understand why I didn't make mm. the team and like I was actually okay with it in the end mm. but at the time I was it's, very upset and, it, and it's okay to rage especially in your you're in a circle yeah like absolutely. A, stages of grief or yeah. whatever it is you're allowed to go through these things but I can understand that you had a great year yeah I did and I felt like I did I was like yeah. Man, what else do I need to do so, so where are things at now so we're in 2024 now. Um, it's ANZ ANZ Cup. At the time we're recording this, you were what third on the third, table? Yeah, you, yeah, you're where you should be. Um, do the the silver ferns for this year get announced? Yeah. After this? Well, we actually had trials to go to the Northern Tour in December, and I actually made it back into the ferns. So in January, I went with the ferns to England, and I played like a four match series with the ferns. So I'm like, feel like I'm, I'm Are you back? back. Yeah. And that was incredible, but it was almost like a feeling of like, how do I explain it? You know when you're like in in the moment and it's not till later that you reflect back on it and being like, man, I did that. Mm. When I was in the, when I was actually in England living it, living it, I remember walking into the stadium, looking up and being like, man, I did it. Like I'm here. Like how freaking cool is this? And my mum actually flew over to watch because, like, she would never not... She wouldn't miss five <laughs> years of mom. me not being in the yeah, fence. Yeah. She would not be missing it for anything. And I just remember being, like, to her, we had a bit of downtime and I went to a hotel. I'm like, we're actually here. Like, we did it. And it wasn't just me who had done it. Like, my parents had done it too to get me back there. So it was a really um, heartfelt tour for me. Even though I didn't play a whole lot, I still played a bit. And just, yeah, knowing that I, even if I never make it back there again, knowing I did it, I'm like, that's cool. Yeah, and just how much harder you had to work than anyone else there. I got I got bumps yeah. just hearing that. That's a great story. Yeah. God, that's a lot, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> that was, well, yeah, what was that moment with your mum? Just like a sense of just overwhelming pride? Yeah, it was like, yeah, just looking up finding her in the stands first of all and just looking at her and connecting with her and being like we did it and then just once you're playing you're just playing you forget about you're everything else you're in the zone but yeah. yeah that and the whole tour i just in every team meeting i just remember because Knowles, the coach she's so incredible and i remember like taking in everything she's saying and trying to contribute the best i can because i'm like i might never be back mm. So you may as well like enjoy every moment and take every single opportunity you can. Mm. Yeah, so, so Dame Nolan, did she give you the call in the beginning of the year to say you're in that? She sat, after the trials had finished, she came and sat with me and she said, you're in, I'm taking you. And I was like, and they, they were taking training partners and I was like, am I in it or am I half in? <laughs> like, what, what in are you talking about? And she just like kind of like, patted me on the back and she was like you've like you've worked so incredibly hard because Knowles has been there for the whole journey she was there when I ruptured both the yeah. Achilles like she'd been on the meetings to hear if I'm in or if I'm out or what's happening so she knows as well and she's heard through the S&C and the physios how hard I've had to work so yeah it was really a nice moment for her to be like nah you've you deserve this enjoy your enjoy like just go and enjoy your opportunity oh that's amazing so it was really nice that is so cool what what makes her such a good coach Everyone speaks oh, really highly of her. I know they own. do, eh? I, I like her style. Like, she's a bit old school in terms of, I guess, her approach. She she doesn't, she's not there to be your best friend. Not saying she's not friendly and approachable, but she's not there to be your best friend. She's the coach to get the best out of us. Mm. And I love that. I'm, I also don't want my coach to be my best friend. Like, I've got enough of them. Um, and just... When she speaks, you want to listen. You know, some people are just like that, eh? Like, yeah, when she has speak, some real manner, yeah. Absolutely. And, like, I, it's hard to describe unless you're in the room, but I just really enjoy her company and I res 
and I guess because the level of respect I have for her is so high, that's why when she speaks it holds so much weight and value. And when I was younger in the environment, I probably struggled to connect with her a little bit because of my own stuff. I was maybe scared to go talk to her. Mm. I I didn't know how to approach, but now I'm older going back in. Oh, sweet ass. If I want feedback, I've got to go get it. If I want to understand something more, I've got to go. And so I felt like when I was in in January, I was able to have a better connection with her because she isn't going to make sure that I understand everything 100% and that it's my responsibility to go to her. And I felt like I got a lot out of her because I was willing to go and approach just as much. Does that make sense? Mm, that makes a yeah. lot of sense. That makes perfect so, sense. So like um, there's a book I read by this guy called J- uh, Jocko Willink. He's like a Navy SEAL dude. It's called mm. Extreme Ownership. And it's about just like taking control of everything yourself. Yes. And, and I feel like, that, like... Be proactive. Go and ask yeah. her for feedback. And because she's not scary. Mm. Or like, she seems scary. Oh, like, I mean, I, I'd probably be scared of her if she was yelling at me, but she... <laughs> Is she a yeller? Nah, she's not. Um, but yeah, she's just awesome. And you're right. Yeah. She's got so much mana and... Mm. Yeah, you really want to listen when she's speaking. Mm-hmm. And what's your career highlight so far? Would it be making the ferns for the first time, winning um, with the Mystics last year, making it back into the Silver Ferns at the beginning of this year? My career highlight is actually winning gold at the Youth World Cup in Botswana. Just because of how much went into that. Like, we were young. We were like 16-year-olds get selected for this under-21 squad. And man, we grinded. They had us in the gym. Like, we're young. We're at uni. We're at school. We're going like three, four mornings a week at 6 a.m. to do strength and conditioning. I've never done strength and conditioning in my life at this point. Learning all these new things, getting all this conditioning work, track, shuttles, all these things I'd never done before. And man, at camps, they absolutely like pummeled us. For four years, they trained us into the ground. Like, it was amazing. Don't get me wrong, but it was hard. And a week bef- and then I got selected in that team and then I got made captain of that team. Wow. And then like maybe a week before me, my mum and dad and the team were due to fly out to Botswana, my nana passed away and she was like, lived around the corner from my house. So really super close with my grandparents. And then, so I had the funeral, my whole team came, that was incredible. Then I just left my entire family to go to the other side of the world to play in this tournament that I'd worked so hard for. And I remember my parents came a few days later and my mum just looked. You can imagine if your mum had just passed away, right? Especially because mm. my mum and her mum were so close. She, my mum just looked drained. And I just remember thinking, my poor mum is here on the other side of the world and her mum has just passed away to support me. Like, we've got to. Like, we have to win this. <laughs> like, very, no like, and I, and then... The night before the final, I was asleep and my nana like came to me in a dream and she actually had her leg amputated because she had diabetes and she, in her dream, we were flicking, in my dream, we were flicking through a photo album and she had both legs and she was really healthy looking before she passed away. She wasn't like Mm -hmm. looking very good and she just looked like beautiful and radiant and like she held my hand and she was like, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm good. Like don't worry about me, like, and I remember waking up and just bawling my eyes out to be like, holy heck, and then I just remember, like, like, telling mum, like, she's, like, she's okay, like, we can let her go, and we can go fucking win this thing, and then, so, yeah, winning that was, like, the most incredible Mm -hmm. moment, and just having my mum and dad there, and then my granddad, who we'd left back in New Zealand, was with my auntie on FaceTime, and, just that we could celebrate that moment together was like, honestly, we still talk about it as family today. Like that was just an incredible moment for, to win, but to be together, to celebrate all of that mm. was just like, I and didn't that, forget and it. And that dream as well. I know it's all in your own mind, yeah. but it's still powerful. Yeah. yeah. Like it was, and just like at the timing of it, timing of it all and it just really got me through that one more game because at that time it's a tournament mm. and you're exhausted and you're like, Got to go play Australia in a 60-minute final. Like, yeah. 
get up again one more yeah, time. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So last year the Mystics won um, the ANZ Cup, and yeah. um, you were uh, it was Sulu Fitzpatrick was um, the captain. Yeah. And that was like her last game. Yeah. What a send off. Yeah. And then you you took over. Did you were you like ear, earmarked <laughs> to be captain, or you get shoulder tapped? How do you find out you're captain? Um, it's yeah. a big responsibility and a big honour. I have been like the vice captain for like five years. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so like I'd been there for a while, like even maybe longer. Um, so I'd oh, always... So you're like Prince Charles yeah, waiting, no, I'd for, always kind waiting of, for the queen to... I'd always been in a leadership role at Mystic since like my second year in the team. Um, but I said to Tia, I really don't want to lead this... I really don't want to lead this team if they don't want me to lead. Like, can you please put a survey out? Like... Ask the girls who they want because if it's not me, I don't want to do it. Mm. Um, like that would just be weird, right? Like you yeah, need you got to have the backing. You got to have the backing, you. otherwise it's hard. And like mm. I would, I am happy not to do it if they think somebody else was better for the job. Um, turns out they uh, did choose me, so I got the job. <laughs> yes, and um, you'd hope so after yeah, five years I know, as vice captain. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna just relinquish all duties at this point. Somebody else can do it. Um, probably just because the girls also know how much I love the team and I will do anything for the team. So they probably thought, oh, yeah, mm. she can deal with all of that extra stuff. Yeah, and, and from what we've talked about in the last hour, like you probably like proved yourself with how you how you held yourself uh, when you were not playing as much as how you've held yourself on the court. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and probably because they're like, oh, she's been waiting long enough to do the job, <laughs> just give it to her. <laughs> yeah, she's not going to go away otherwise. Yeah. Um, what about goal setting, plans for the future? Uh, plans for the future, honestly, like just be healthy. Like, I'm really realistic about my future. Um, I take it year by year. Like, if my body's not going to allow me to do it, I, I'm not even thirty yet. Um, I still need to live in this body for a really long time. So, if I'm going to keep smashing it into the ground, I've got to be prepared to not be able to do much later in mm. life. And I don't want to do that. So in terms of sport, my goals are just to take it year by year. So I don't really have any. Um, I like I'd love to get back in the ferns at the end of the ANZ season. I'd love to win this ANZ season. I'd love to play good netball. But uh, as far as that goes, mm. not much. You say, how old, what are you? 27? 27, 27 yeah. Yeah, are you worried about life post netball and how <laughs> that's going to look in terms of, you know, your, your physical carcass? Yeah, I am a bit. And that's why I'm trying to be really proactive and looking after myself now but also not trying to plan too far ahead in case I actually can't get there yeah yeah because you don't want to be like a a 35 year old mum that, that's no, you're rubbing your knees no, before you go I to wanna, the park with your <laughs> I want to teach my kids like that they can't beat me in anything physical until they're at least like 17 like I want to be really competitive like owning them in all backyard mm. sports not like being the ref on the sideline because yeah. I can't move and what about outside of netball? What are you into? What do um, you do? To be honest, I'm really thinking hard about that. I don't think I want to be a teacher. I, but I don't know what I want to do. I love education and I love teaching about health. But I would love to go and somehow teach it to people who really want to be there. Like, and I don't know who that is, but like maybe adult education in some way or some form. But I don't know what that looks like. Mm. And but, oh, what about coaching? You, you mentioned no, you did a bit of you no, did a bit of coaching no. when you were no no that seems like a firm that you've said no four times yeah <laughs> I I would maybe one day like later in my career but not anytime soon yeah 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 and and what about your partner you mentioned before you uh, met your partner on Bumble yeah how long have you been together uh a year and a half ish oh so you've deleted the apps so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually we after our first date we went on our second date and like after that. We spent like five days with each other without leaving. And like he's just... Why? Was that a lockdown thing or by no, choice? No, by yeah. choice. Like he's just my person and like I love him with all my soul and he's just my person. And I don't know what our future looks like, but I just not like... I don't know how to explain it, but I just know in my soul that we're going to have a really like joyful, happy life. Probably because wow. he's not stubborn like me and like he's... <laughs> <laughs> Is he more like your dad? He's more like my dad, yeah, he's more calm and like if I'm like, I'm like Croatian, like... Bah, 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 he's just there like... But he can put me in my place when I need it and I need that. Um, so we, yeah, we just have the most amazing relationship and I just feel so thankful that I somehow met him. 
Were, yeah, how were you quite active on the apps? No, no. He was just like up in my area for work, randomly staying with a friend. And then we matched, and he was like, "Do you want to do this, 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 and this?" And I was like, "I'm not doing any of those things with you." All of the people in this small, tiny community I live in know me because it's, it's a small place. Like, no, I'm not having people know my business. Then we ended up going skateboarding. Of all random. Quite, yeah, I know, random. Done. What, it was what like, were his initial suggestions? Oh, like dinner and like coffee and like all these oh, places. Oh, yeah, all very reasonable. Which I would, <laughs> I would know people at these places potentially. So I'm like, I'm not having people know my business. So it was like, <laughs> I, I had training on well, my own training from like 7 to 8.30. So I was like, I can meet you at 8.30. Like am and he was like, oh, that's a bit like, okay, weird. I was like, but then I've got an appointment at 9.30, so like fit in that gap or like jog on. And he was like, no, no, like that's fine. So yeah, we went somehow to the skate park. Shit, you wouldn't want to be hitting the Achilles with a board, no, would you? No, 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 no. <laughs> wow, I, that's not something I sort of thought about, but I, yeah, I suppose the area you're in, you're from a para- yeah, yeah, tiny so. place, like. But also, um, like you mentioned before about people spotting you at the airport and in the the airplane when you were you crying, that sort of recognition. I suppose yeah. you don't know who's yeah. Who's I guess watching then any- I was in all my kit, so it's easier to spot oh, me. Yeah. But like my local, you know, and I'm a teacher as well. Like I don't want kids being oh, I saw Miss on a date, <laughs> like, you know, like and because you can tell if it's a first date, right? It's awkward and it's weird. Yeah, just the way they in, interact and talk with each other. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it has yeah. big first aid Absolutely. energy. Absolutely. So I was like, I do not want that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Well, it seems like everything's going really well. And um, yeah, touch. Oh, I don't even think that's wood. Yeah. Um, but best of luck for everything. Are you are you you doing it like an extra good job with strength and strength and conditioning to make sure? Oh, uh, lots. Yeah. And like I'm on a bit of a different program to the rest of my team, just because of like how I am. Like I I do need to be treated a little bit differently. Um, I've got the most amazing massage therapist who absolutely annihilates me every week. Um, heaps of pull, heaps of recovery. So everything is good. Brilliant. Hey, it's been wonderful to sit down with you today. I've Thank really you. enjoyed it. It's been cool. It's. Um, I feel like a lot of people can get a lot out of this as well. Like, yeah, uh, I did think when I was coming on, I was like, shit, I'm boring compared to all the people. Like, because I've listened to the podcast. I was like, there's some really awesome people on here. And I'm like, what the hell have I got to offer? <laughs> Oh no! I think you'd be you'd be surprised. Um, maybe if you don't appreciate it now, maybe when you get older, like post netball, you'll realise just how amazing um, it is to come back from what you've been through. Yeah. And you've done it with a smile on your face for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> yes, to the outside world, smiling. Yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, best of luck for the um, the rest of the Mystic season and the Thank ANZ you. Cup and um, whatever the future holds. Thank you.